All right, so our goal now is to finish our classwork, which is to find dvw a second way. We've already found it earlier today, but we're going to find dvw this time using the formulas for the Christoffel symbols. And we said that the formula for the Christoffel symbol involved finding the the matrix the the the, um, the matrix of um, it's called the Riemannian metric tensor or the first fundamental form. We would have to find this matrix. We need to take dd xj, ddxi, ddxl of this matrix. So we needed to find the matrix and we also had to find the inverse of the matrix. So in order to do that, we already, sorry, we already found the matrix as a function that was in our photo and we were finding the derivatives of the matrix here and I found, I did all the work in green, I took derivatives in every single one of the entries and after I took the derivatives, then I substituted the values, 3, 4, 0, and I got very simple formulas. 25 times 8 over 9 squared, 0, 0 is the first directional derivative, and the second derivative of GIJ just came out to be 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's very nice and simple and very straightforward. And the other thing we need to do is take the inverse of this matrix. So let's just write down the key facts that we have here on the top. That's already worked out. We have the D, DX1 of G, I, J, um, D, D, X, 1. In fact, the only entry that's not 0 is D, D, X, 1 of G, 1, 1. D, D, X, 1 of G, 1, 1 is 25 times 8 over 9 squared. Okay, that's the 25 times 8 over 9 squared. Okay, I got that from here. And every other derivative d d x l g i j equals zero for all other. Okay, so this is really, really simple. We only have one entry that's not zero, and that's d d x one of g one one. So that will make it easier when we need to apply this. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the inverse of the matrix G. So when we find the inverse of the matrix G, we need to find the inverse of this matrix. So it's actually a diagonal matrix. So we find the inverse, inverse of G. Since it's diagonal, it's very easy to figure out. All you do is do one over each of the diagonal entries. Now, it's not always diagonal, so you might have more work on yours. But this will be 3 squared over 5 squared, 0, 0, 1. All right? And then that, what that means is that my G super 1, 1 is this entry, 3 squared over 5 squared. And G super 1, 2, which equals G super 2, 1, is both equal to 0 and g super 2, 2 is equal to 1. All right, so that's what these entries are that we're going to be using inside the formula for our gamma. So I'm going to put these aside and go back to the question that we're trying to solve. We'll save this. We're going to need these numbers. And now the question is to find d, v, w. Now, dvw is d of, what is our v? It's our x1 hat. And what is our w? It's our x2 hat. And then according to the definition of the um, Christoffel symbols, this is equal to gamma 1, 2, 1, x1 hat plus gamma 1, 2, 2, x2 hat. This is by definition of gamma i, j, k. Now let's just emphasize so you understand where all these numbers are coming from. The one here, that's the direction we're differentiating, is this one and this one. That's where those ones are coming from. I'm really sorry, my colors are not working very well. One, one, one. The two that's there is coming from this x2. That's this 2 and this 2. And the number on the top comes from this number. And the number on top here corresponds to that number. So I guess I can mark those in red. This 1 corresponds with this 1. And this 2 corresponds with this 2. All right? So it's, it's hard to read it. 
So I'm just going to go back to doing all of them in green after the explanation. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find gamma 1, 2, 1. So we need to find gamma 1, 2, 1 equals, according to this, gamma 1, 2, 1 is the sum. Now our L's are going to sum from 1 to 2 because there's only two dimensions in this case. 1 half G, okay, the K here is this upper entry, so that's 1L, that one comes from that one times d dx, where, what is j? j is the second entry here, that's a 2, of g l i, i is this guy, that's 1, so this is l1, plus d dx, what is our i? It's 1, of g l2, and the last one is minus d d x l of g i j that's g one two okay so this is the former of gamma one two one and now what we need to do is we have to actually look up our der our um, derivatives but notice we said that all the derivatives were zero except for d d x one g one one so all these entries are zero except d d x one of g one one that's the only one that's not zero now let me just make this clearer i'm not going to write this here we're just going to remember that only when all three are one is this not zero Remember, this is a sum from L equal 1 to 2, so that means we're adding the same thing with L equal to 2. d dx2, g21 plus d dx1, g22 minus d dx2, g12. And this one is when L equals 1, so I can get rid of the sum symbol now and put in L equal 1. L equal 1. L equal 1, L equal 1, here. All right, so this is the sum. I did the sum. I wrote down both terms in the sum. And once I've written out both terms in the sum, now I have to look and say, okay, what's 0, what's not 0? In our diagonal, the inverse of G, we see that G12 and G21 with superscripts is 0. So because the superscripts is 0, this is zero, and that means this whole second term is gone. All right, that's very good news. Now let's look at the first term. What is G11? It's three squared over, sorry, G11 is three squared over five squared. So we get one half of three squared over five squared times ddx2 of G11. Well, ddxl of gij is zero except when they're all three ones. So I'm going to get this guy is zero plus this guy is zero minus this one is zero. So our g121 is just zero. This is using our values. Okay, so we get that that is zero. So our gamma one, two is zero. All right, so we're almost done. We already got zero over here. This is zero now. And now we should figure out gamma one, two, two. Now when I'm finding out gamma one, two, two, that means I have to change every place where there was a K into a 2. So there was a K here. That should be a 2. This guy might not cancel anymore. This will now be G2, 2. He's not 0, actually. And there was no K here. There was no K here. And there was no K here. So we don't have to change anything else. The only things we change is that this 2 is appearing here now because of that too. 
So just to keep everything consistent, this is G2, 2. So the new thing is that we have a 2 here and a 2 here. And now we want to simplify things using that we have these 2s. This is the formula. Now I have to erase our old values that we figured out. And now we have to look and say, okay, let's see what we get. G21, that's the inverse entry 21, is 0. So that one is gone. This is gone, which means this whole first row is gone. This is 0. This whole thing is 0 because G21 is 0. But G22 is 1. So this guy is a 1. So now we say, okay, it's equal to 1 half times 1 times ddx2 of g21. Well, let's think about that. Only ddx1 of g11 is not 0. All the other ones are 0. So this is 0. Plus x1 of g22 is 0. Plus x2 g12 is 0. So everything is 0. So we're getting that gamma122 is 0. Thus... D, V, W is equal to 0 x1 hats plus 0 x2 hats because the first Christoffel symbol was 0 and the second Christoffel symbol was 0. So this comes out to be 0, the 0 vector. And that's the answer to the question which matches the solution we had already found with D, V, W in the past. At P, this is at P. Okay, at other points, dvw is not going to be zero. We're using the fact that it's at p, and where have we used at p? We used it very much when we found out the inverse of g, because g is not nice and diagonal. It doesn't have this inverse at other points. This is the inverse of g at p. And so we end up with this answer. Very nice and straightforward. Thanks.